Welcome back to the Rice Krispie Treat car tutorial by me, Elizabeth Merrick. We'll be finishing up the final details today and I'll be walking you through the rest of the steps on um, how to get this car cake looking perfect. If you've watched uh, video one and two, you're following along, I'm sure, and if you haven't watched the first two videos, you might want to watch those so you can catch up. So. I picked off, picked up where we left off, and uh, I don't know the technical names to these parts, so bear with me. This is the, uh, the little piece on top of the hood. Um, I'm not exactly sure what it's called, but uh, you don't really need to know the names of, of the car parts to build them. Just reference your photo a lot and just break it down, like I've mentioned before, piece by piece. Uh, if you need that smooth look, you might build up the part that you're looking for and then lay over more fondant to get the smoothness like I have here. And only wet your fondant where you want the fondant to stick so that you don't go get any uh, rough patches. Use a nice sharp X-Acto knife that's clean and you only use for fondant work. I've cut along the indentation of where I uh, outlined the hood in reference to the to the uh, uh, the photo that I have of the car and because the fondant is so thin you can easily see where to cut and I only wet on top of that part that I wanted to stick so the rest of the fondant peels away easily as you can see I'm adding in some more detail with just a flat tool that I have I'm again I'm not sure what these are for but all of these details um, just make this car look more realistic. Take your time and make sure that both sides are even and look good. Cutting out a little piece of the fondant that was overlaying the little raised piece so that I can insert some black, give it some depth. Again, I didn't put any water in there so it peeled away easily. I'm inserting pieces of fondant for the interior now. Just wetting places I want them to stick and then cutting away the excess. I did that for the floor and for the sides of the doors and now I'm doing for the dashboard. Just pressing on. I created a, a texture just with the tool that I had. You don't have to have a texture. And then just cutting away the excess. Try not to cut too far into the fondant, or you could tear it or accidentally damage the fondant below. So just take your time and go slow. And as always, a nice sharp X Acto makes a big difference. So I've made my outline of where the back trunk is using the same flat tool that I used to make the lines in the car, walls, the doors, the hood. Now I'm rolling out a, a piece of fondant to go around the edge of the dashboard that we just created to give it a nice clean look. You don't really want to ever have any raw edges showing, any cut marks. If you want, the more, the more all your edges are finished and smooth looking, the more professional it's going to look. So I'm just fussing with all of these little pieces. I used a, uh, a small wooden toothpick for, the, uh, for where the steering wheel is going to be and embedded that into the rice cereal and wrapped a piece of fondant around it. And then I used very uh, various sized uh, piping tips to cut out very thin pieces of black for the dials on the dashboard. And then just stuck those on there. Helps if it's actually wet enough to stick. I try not to use very much water. The wetter something is, the more gooier it gets. just keep adding your dials until 
you have as many as they have on the picture. I went through with a uh, small tool to add little holes where the rivets are going to be on the dashboard as well as around the doors and uh, all of the edges around the dashboard and then just very carefully put little silver pieces of fondant in, in the holes where the, the rivets are and then along the, the doors and everything on the outside. And this is tedious but it's another detail that makes a big difference. Reference your photo a lot to see what other details you need to add. I'm adding the little hooks where your goggles would hang. A couple switches. I don't know what they're for, but they're in the picture, so we're putting them in there. The great thing is the person who's getting this topper would know if something was missing. So when you're making something like a car for a car lover, the more details you put in there, the more they're going to re realize how much work you've put into it. And they'll, they'll, they'll notice. And then I rolled out some very, very thin little uh, pieces of fondant to go around the gears and the, um, the dials. And even my fingers are too big to, to work that small, so use your tools to wrap them around and get them looking how they're supposed to look. And then after I uh, got all of these details on here, I went and gave it a quick spray of silver um, to give it a little bit of shine but not too much. Putting some silver finishing touches on the little holes on the side of the car. Then I used a ball tool to sort of hollow them out similarly how we uh, did it the first time. And then I gave those a little bit of a spray with some silver as well. For the back of the car, I used a ball tool to indent the fondant where I wanted the lights to be and then filled those with silver fondant as well and then used the ball tool again to hollow those out and that's where we're going to put the uh, the red brake lights. For the license plate I simply cut out a uh, square as big as my license plate was and just inserted that in there. When you're putting in things like lights and license plates Make sure you pay attention to scale, how big things are in relation to everything else. So I'm just inserting little bits of red fondant into the gray to make it look like it has uh, lights in the back. Make sure all your pieces are the same, same size, so you have uniformity. And then go ahead and add some bumper details. Just taking some gray fondant and rolling it out to the thickness and wrapping it down below and go ahead and do the same thing for the front. Then 
add some chrome details to the back of the, the trunk. And I did the same thing for the front. I used a uh, tan fondant for the interior seats. Used one piece for the seat and for the bottom part of the seat and then another piece for the top part. Pretty simple. And then used another piece of fondant to wrap around the top part of the seat to give it some depth. And then just used my um, shaping tool to, to put in some lines. to show like stitching. And again, I could have left this flat. You don't need to put this much detail in there, but the more detail you put in, the more realistic it's going to look. Sometimes when you leave these details out, the car looks weird because your brain knows something is missing, but it doesn't know what. But when all of the details are on there, it all comes together and looks, you know, seamless. Just using the tool to smooth out the armrests, filling in any holes there might be, and just mess with it until you're happy with it. For the front grill, I uh, cut out a small piece of the fondant and pulled it out so that I could inlay some black. I'm going to use this as the backdrop to the grill. Just smooth that out and then cut around, cut, cut off the excess. Following the indentation of the cutout that you made. Using a nice sharp X-Acto knife. It's clean. Don't cut your fingers. And smooth that out get it wet. And then I just rolled out a bunch of really thin pieces of gray fondant and cut them to length as I put them on there. Making sure that all of the little ropes are the same size and thickness and spaced evenly. Continue to do this until the whole grill is covered. Be careful not to smush them. And then I uh, rolled out one last piece of fondant to go to wrap around the grill to give it that finished look. So go ahead and continue adding details like headlights and the front bumper. And uh, for the windshield, I just used small cut plate pieces of a plastic cup, um, but you could use isomalt or gelatin if you wanted to. And then I took some silver paint and vo or silver luster dust and vodka to paint the chrome details. Put the exhaust pipe down below. Um, painted all of the rims, and uh, just keep referring back to your photo and adding more details until you're happy with it. But I hope hopefully this was enough to show you how I do it and how you could make your own car cake from any style and uh, taught you a few things along the way. Hope you found this interesting and helpful. If you have any questions about this, you can leave a comment below 
or email me and I'd be happy to answer those for you. Uh, I uh, wasn't able to show you everything I did. It gets a little bit tedious, but hopefully these three videos was enough. Uh, I appreciate you watching and I'll be posting more videos soon. If you have a suggestion, just leave a comment and I'll take that into consideration. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.